Hello everyone. It's been quite a while since I've been around, so I am happy to be back. I was on a little vacation, a relaxing vacation with my family, a beach vacation, which was absolutely lovely. And now the grandkids have kind of gone back to school, so now I have more time. And I wanted to start out um, a project that I've been waiting for, um, for the digital to come out. And that was uh, Amy at Crafty Cat. She hinted that she was making her Halloween digital. And I was telling her to hurry up because <laughs> I wanted to have it. Um, but anyway, kidding aside, her and I talk. So it's okay. She She gets it. But um, she did come out with it. Um, I'm not sh sure. She hasn't shown it yet, but it is coming. So um, I got the kit from her, and I wanted to make um, a journal with it. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, she did do a little uh, video uh, on a card she made with part of it. It's a very beautiful watercolor um, pay up. Uh, digital collection. It's just gorgeous. I'm in love with it. I hope you will be too. So I'm going to put the link below um, that she will um, be having that available. And it could be even available now. And I don't have the whole kit printed out. Um, but I did want to show you um, how pretty it is, the colors. And this is just some of the colors, uh, the pages here. It's been a while since I made a video, so my words aren't coming very quickly here. But isn't this absolutely beautiful? Oh my gosh, I can't stop looking at it. Plus, she has the um, paper looks like it's done on watercolor. So when you print it out, it actually looks like it's on watercolor paper, which I think is genius. I love it. So that's just a little sampling of it. So what I wanted to tell you is... Um, you know, we've all heard of the flip-flop journals, right? And um, I love them. I've made some. Um, if recent, uh, Not too long ago on my channel, I had a series on doing a prayer journal, flip-flop journal, which went over really, really well. And it's just one of my favorite things I've made. Um, and I might have had another one. But anyway, I love making flip-flop journals. And so I knew I wanted to make one. But there was a gal... Um, I can't think of her name, but her channel, and I'll link that below as well. Her channel is called Chasing Paper, and she made a flip-flop journal without envelopes, just paper, cardstock paper. And I and I watched it, and I thought, wow, that's like so easy, and you're not flipping around envelopes and trying to figure out where where goes you know where they go and all that. So um, it's a little easier. It's faster. And it has the same exact effect. It looks the same, pretty much. And then it depends on what you make pockets and tucks with and things like that. You know, you can add envelopes in it, but the base is really, really easy. Um, and so that's what I want to show you how to do with uh, Amy's digital kit here. It's quick. It works up fast. Um, I also uh, have one in the makes, which I'll show you uh, another video. I have a, a fall tea, a fall tea journal made that way. And I even started one with a scrapbook uh, kit from Frank Garcia, um, last year's kit, Luna, although this year's kit is just as gorgeous, Twilight. I want to get that too, but I'll show you those another time. But I thought I would start and show you step by step with Amy's new kit, which I'm super excited with. So the first thing you need to do is get the kit, of course, you know, and um, there's a lot of pages in it. So it's really, really beautiful. So um, I hope I hope you uh, like it as love it as much as I do. So um, the first thing you want to do is um, use you want to get your base on cardstock. Now I can I print on um, this is 80 pound um, cardstock from Hobby Lobby. I can run this through my printer. Now not everybody can run cardstock through their printer. So <clears throat> see if you can. And um, 
I, I mean, I would think you could get some kind of cardstock through your printer, but if you can't, you, you want the base to be a little heftier than just um, paper, okay? So if you cannot get any type of cardstock or any kind of thicker paper other than copy paper through your printer, I guess what I would suggest to you is print the kit out on the paper you can, and then you could probably glue it and or sew it to a piece of cardstock. Um, because you want the base to be cardstock and then your pages, your your signatures will be your your copy paper, or envelopes or um, whatever kind of papers you want to use, you know. But the base of the, the flip flap journal ha uh, would like I would like it to be like cardstock. And um, so anyway, um, you're going to need three, three pieces to make the base double sided. So I printed um, on both sides three pieces of cardstock, okay? So it's going to be really hard to pick from the, you know, the, what you want for your cover. So, you know, look at your, look at the digital kit and see, you know, what strikes your fancy. What do you want on the cover and things like that, okay? That was, that was a hard part for me, but I did it, but it was a fun part, Okay. So then um, we're going to glue these together. Now, I glued a little and then stitched, and I'll show you that. But if you don't stitch or you don't sew, just glue them. So first of all, you want to pick which one do you want for your cover. So what I did was <clears throat> I wanted this here on my cover, this here. And I'll tell you the reason why. Um, but first of all, you have to decide what you want on your cover. Now, the, the journal itself is going to measure, um, it's eight and a half here, and because that's the digital, eight and a half. And then we're going to um, make it, it's going to be uh, four inches wide. Okay, so you have to keep that in mind when you're picking out your cover. And the reason I wanted this, because I like this image with the, the ghosty, person and then the house here and I want to put a moon here with bats and that's why I picked this cover because I splurged on Tim Holtz products and I got the moon dye and I'm I'm just dying to try it it would go perfect here so that's why I picked this but you have to decide what you want this would make a beautiful cover here that's a beautiful cover um, even the pumpkins I mean you really even frank frank <laughs> here i could put the moon right here too i i thought about that too so it was hard to decide you know so anyway i'm going to have this as my cover so whatever one you want on your cover and then of course you have to print the back side but you know you can figure that out so the main thing is to see which one you want for your cover okay so that's going to go to the right then you decide what is your next page, okay? So um, then the next page, oh, one second here, let me just look here what I'm doing here. Okay, the next page I wanted was the pumpkins. So that's going to be the next page. And then the last page um, is going to be this if I got that right so I'm um, just checking my sample here and I'm going to because we're going to move on after I show you and then um, let's see I think did I want this there how did I do that okay I wanted the pumpkins or maybe Sorry, just give me one second here. I am going to tell you, I have to look at my sample. As I, I want to just show, just in case you want to do it the way I did it. Okay. Okay, so this here. Okay, this is going here. Sorry, that's going there. And then this is going here. 
Okay, I got it now. I think I got it now. Okay, so really, it's just pick pick your cover, your cover, and then just pick the other two that you think look good together. It's not that big a deal. They all go together so beautiful. Okay, so this is what I'm, I'm going to tell you to do. So my cover is here. I'm putting that one to the right. This is the next one, and then this is the next one here, okay? So on this middle one here, we're going to glue this one to here. Now, I found by uh, tracing a line, you'll get it even. It's important to get everything even. So what I'm going to do is take my clear ruler, and I'm going to measure three, three eighths along the edge here. And I'm going to make a light pencil mark. This is easy, believe me. Don't worry, it's, it's not that hard. It's so easy, you're going to see. And it looks the same. Okay, so I'm making my line, a light pencil line there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my glue and put it to the right of the pencil line. Now, if you're just going to glue only, put a nice a little amount of glue on there. If you're going to stitch, I just put a light light uh, coating of glue here just to hold it like I'm doing here. And then what you're going to do is take your first page, that's the cover here, take the first page and you're going to just line it up to the pencil line, just butt it up right to the pencil line, and then you should be even. And if you're better at eyeing it and just sticking it down, then stick it down. But I am not that good at that. So I just want to measure. I know it'll be straight. It worked out for me before. Okay, so there's the cover. I glued the cover on top of the middle one. And now to the last one, I'm going to glue this one on top of the last one. So once again, I'll take my pencil. I'll measure in uh, 3 eighths along the edge here. If I can hold the ruler straight. Make a light pencil mark. You can barely see it, but as long as you see it, that's all that matters. Okay, and then put some glue, or a little more generous if you're just going to glue. But I'm going to stitch, and I'll, I already have one done, so I'm going to show you that. But um, get some glue on there, and then let's line this up now. And uh, you don't see the pencil mark. It's okay. And there we go. It's easy. See, if I make the pencil mark, it's super easy quick you don't have to worry that you're not lining it up okay okay um at this point you can um let it dry for a minute before we fold it or if you want to stitch this what i did was i just and i'll show you in a second i zigzagged up uh, across here this joint and then down this joint here i zigzagged Okay, once you have that done, um, you can start folding it. So then what you want to do is um, get your scoreboard out if you have one. Um, I'm going to, I have a cutter that has a scoring tool on it. Okay, so get your scoreboard out and um, just my quick tip here is I clean the track of my cutter with an old toothbrush get all the little fuzzies out so it works really well okay so we're going to make this four inches wide this journal okay so this is going to be my cover so I'm just going to flip this around so I can get it in here in case you didn't notice I am a lefty so it might look a little weird to you but <laughs> okay so I'm going to put this at four so you want to Put your cover at four and I'm going to score okay and I'm going to take it out and 
this over for a second. Okay, and then that's the inside here. You can see the inside, see? Okay, so I now when you're going to fold on your score lines, it's important to maintain, um, you know, everything measures and I mean, uh, you know, line it up because if you don't, it's going to get wonky on you. So you want to use your bone folder and make sure that's there. Okay, so that's my cover, see? Cover. And now you're going to score it every four inches. What I like to do is I put it in here, line this up, the edge up with my score, the line on my on my um, uh, cutter here. I'm going to score again. Okay, and I'm going to take it out. And now you're going to accordion fold. So now I'm going to go back this way now. Once again, I'm going to line it up here. Make sure this is all lined up. And then I'm going to score. I mean, uh, you know, use my bone folder here, okay? So this is what we're doing. We're accordion folding, okay? So here's the cover already, and here's your opening. Okay, now I'm going to go back. Don't worry about where the seams are because that's that's just part of it, and it, and it all looks really good. Oops. So I'm going to put it in. We're going to keep on scoring every four inches. So once again, I line it up here to make sure I have it. I'll open it up here. And I just like to take my time on this because I don't want it to be wonky. I'd rather take my time than um, hurry this along, okay? This is important. Okay, so once you have it down, take my bone folder again. And you'll see now we're starting to form pages here. So I'm going to go back in, give it another four inch score, keep going. And do it again. All right. I'm going to fold it again, making sure. Sorry if I move the camera. I'm sorry about that. Making sure the edges are lined up. And then we're going to go in again. Line it up. Make sure I have that right. Okay. And we're almost done, and then I'm going to show you what we do next. Get that lined up there. And another score here. Another fold. And one more score. Actually, um, not one more score. We're going to cut that. So let's see, we have that. Two. And then we have, I'll show you one. Two. Okay. So what we're going to do is this last piece here. I mean, if you want to score it and have another piece, you can. But really, we don't need that. And this extra piece here, well, we can make into a tag. So I'm going to cut this off. So the very end, we're going to cut off. Okay? And we can make this into a tag or a pocket or whatever. So this won't go to waste. Okay? So now let me show you. Put my cutter away here. Okay. Now, this is it here. You can see it's just an accordion here right now, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I've got my cover. So when you open it up, you have that page. Now, what I'm going to do, and you can do this on any of the folds, but 
I am going to, and it's so hard to cover everything up, but I'm going to make this part a pocket. So what I'm going to do is uh, glue, run glue across the top and the bottom and stick these two together, okay? Um, if you want it to be a top loading pocket, you would just glue here and here and make it a top loading if you want. But I want it to be a side loading pocket. So <clears throat> we're going to run glue here and here, glue this together. So this will be our pocket here. Okay, so once you do that, say that's done already. So here's your cover. You open it up. A signature goes here. Uh, uh, you have a pocket here. A signature goes here. Flip it. Now you flip it back. A signature goes here, here, and here. So there are five signatures in this journal. So you have plenty of room to do things in. And, and, and that's it. And then you're back to the cover. Isn't that easy? I mean, it really is. And you're not, um, you know, dealing with envelopes and trying to figure out. And this is it. This is your base right here. So um, let me show you the next step. And I'm telling you, the hardest part is picking out what, which scene you want. It really is. So... Um, I want to show you, now, I want to, I already have one started here, and I want to take, I have some signatures started, and I'll talk about those too. Give me one second, I just have them right where I need them, and let me just take them out, and I'm going to show you the base again. So let me just work these out and then I'll show you what what I did now you can do your own thing for pages but okay so once again here's my base and I didn't glue that yet now I wanted to show you that's where I sewed our seams you know I just did a zigzag on there so yeah I'm gonna lose this in here but that's okay because when you turn it over there you've got stitching there and then you, you still see stitching here. So you're going to, you know, you don't have to make a, a pocket. If you don't want to make a pocket, then don't make a pocket like that. But I kind of like the way that looks. So um, this is what we're going to do. And five signatures. I mean, how much more do you need? And it's going to get chunky. Let me tell you, it will get chunky. So once you have that done, um, we can... Um, okay. So anyway, you can glue this, and we can do that. And matter of fact, I can do that right now. We'll show you how to, you know, just run it along the, t if you want to. Like I said, you can put it anywhere you want, but on this one, I am going to glue across the top, and then glue across the bottom, and then I'll have a nice pocket. And the beauty about this, you know, digital kit is you can print as many as you want pages and do whatever you want with it. And Amy's got a really nice selection of ephemera to cut out. She's got her CD cases and her uh, envelope, window envelope as always. So she has a nice, nice selection. So let me just get that glued together. And see, that's why it's so important to make sure to go slow and make sure everything is measuring and lining up really nice, okay? So getting back to this gal on chasing paper, this is, like I said, her idea. She used, um, she made one using Tim Holtz scrapbook paper, but I, there's no reason you can't use digitals. They're, you know, eight and a half tall, four wide. I think it's a perfect size. The other thing she had a video on, which I really thought would work really, really well, is, you know, being cardstock, um, you know, you're using it, it, it could, the edges could bend a little bit, right? Even though it's cardstock. But she had a, a nice little video on how to make faux corners, you know, like the metal corners you put on books and things like that. So I jumped on that right away too. Now she made her full metal corners with um, metallic cardstock that you could buy and that would be fine. 
depending on the look you're looking for. So because this is all like beautiful watercolor, I, I didn't want to use a metallic paper to make a metal looking um, book uh, corners. And you want to put one on here, here, and then on the back here and here, right? So my idea was, what I did was I, I took some another piece of white cardstock and I sprayed it um, with some mica, some of the mica sprays. And if you don't have any mica sprays, just use a watercolor paper or um, your acrylic paints, um, whatever, or just plain cardstock, colored cardstock, whatever you want to use. But because I need to play with my things I bought, I'm this is what I'm using. So I just took some the white white cardstock. <coughs> excuse me. I sprayed, dried it up, and made, I'll show you how to do it too, and, and I'll link her video. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a little cold too. Can, let me get one drink here, one second. Okay, so um, I thought that was genius how she did that. So I wanted to show you. Um, so what I did was I sprayed some paper, I took the paper and I grabbed one of my embossing folders. They had a nice, um, just a all over texture on it. And I ran the paper through the embossing machine. And, and um, I'll just give you a, a tip on that, which you might know already, is if you lightly mist your paper uh, with water, just very lightly, give it a little one spritz, it makes it pliable enough when you put it through the um, embossing folder, it won't crack, okay? And it's just damp enough to work with when you'll see what we're going to do. Now, my paper is dry, so we'll see how that works. But um, what you do is you cut it two pieces, um, two by two squares, okay? And you can watch her video. I'm just going to go through it. Um, once again, this is Chasing Paper's idea. So you just want to take these squares, and um, if they are damp, it's better to just slightly damp works best, I think, in my opinion. Um, these are a little dry, but you want to just fold it in half like that, both of them. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Um, line it up the best you can. And the reason I don't want to use a bone folder, I guess you could... But I don't want to uh, cre uh, flatten out my embossing, so that's it's better to just use your finger. Okay, so then, um, now what I need to do, and I always need to do this for myself, I need to measure, but if you can do it, just eyeball it, go for it. So it's two inches, right? So I'm just going to make a little pencil mark here at the one inch at the middle here, and what you want to do is take the corner <clears throat> and you want to bring it down like this and just go slow and you want to meet the edges here and give it a fold okay and then you want to do the same with this one and I just kind of use my nail and I kind of like start moving bending it here so I give it a bend now if you're not embossing then you won't you know, it'll be easier, but because of the embossing, um, and don't worry that it's off kilter, it'll all work out, you'll see. So we want to do that. So once again, I need to make myself a mark so I know where the middle is. It just helps me here. And I'm going to bend this down and meet the other side like that. And then do the same. It, it's not hard believe me once you've made a couple you're gonna you're gonna think wow this lady I mean if if this is you know her original idea she's she's a genius on this okay so once you have that done you're gonna open it back up like that okay and then you're gonna take your scissors and you, you don't even have to measure this. I mean, it works. You're just going to clip each corner off on each side. 
and we'll it'll all work out in the end don't worry so you know it's folded here open it up and you're gonna clip just eyeball it it's fine okay then we're going to open this up and it looks like this all right so the crease down the middle right down the middle here you're going to carefully cut that in half and that's going to I'll show you that's going to give you two corners because we need four corners for it so I'm going to um I'm going to show you how to do this here you're going to cut those off okay and then so now these because this was folded this way you're just going to fold these back on themselves here like that okay now you can see you know if it doesn't that's your corner and it's it's going to look really good so I can see that this part is just hanging off here so you can always trim it to make it even across and then here um, I could just make this a little even here and I'll show you how it's going to look. So once you get that folded, you can just fix them that way and they're going to fold in. See how it looks. I just want to even this out the best you can. See how that looks there? That looks pretty good. Okay, and then here, we're going to bend this back in. Let's see how I did that. It's pretty forgiving, the paper, so don't stress over anything. It's going to look great. And if you have any overhang, you can just even that out. Not much overhang here. Looks good. And then one more. That looks good. Slight overhang. I mean, you can't get it that perfect. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's going to be fine. Okay. And this one is a little bigger. I'm just going to cut a smidge off there. Okay, now. The next thing I want to do is, so we don't see any white, is I'm going to take, I have Villainous Potion here. I'm just going to give it a quick going over on all the creases so there's no white showing, no chance of a white. I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to do that. Okay. Okay. And, um, yeah, I think these are going to look really nice. I'll show you how that works. And then it gives the corners a little more stability. Just enough. Just enough to have, you know, for opening and closing. It's it's It gives it a little bit more. But, I mean, the metallic ones, when she used metallic paper, that was gorgeous. But, you know, you've got to go with um, the look of your journal what you're making but and she used a decorative punch so you definitely need to check her video out so okay we're ready I think okay so now I'll show you what what they're gonna look like so the next thing is once you have your um you know your folder done it's sewn we've got our pocket in here right we've got our pocket there now so that's good the next thing would be, um, let's put those cut corners on now. Look how cute this is going to look. You're going to glue them on, and they're just going to, they're going to look really cute. See how they look? And then when you open it, they're going to look like real corners, just like that. So we're going to glue them on. You just put a little glue all over it. Slip it on. Okay, so let's do that. And then we'll see how much time is 
we're using up here. So I don't want to make you sit too long. But I think if you get this part done, I think the next video will be, I'll tell you about the pages for the signatures. So I wanted to at least get this, um, the cover done the, um, so you could get that ready. And it really is fun making the cover. I mean, the, um, the base of it. Okay, let me just get that on there. See, see how nice that looks? And it folds nice, too. Okay, so we have one. And let me get the next one on. And if you don't want to emboss, then just use cardstock, colored cardstock, or metal. If you like the metal look on me, I mean, you know, you can just do what you want. Um, I just, because of the watercolor look on Amy's uh, digital, I wanted to keep everything in a watercolor feel that I'm, okay. And they fit, they fit really nice. There, there's no, um, no fooling around with it. They look really good. Look at that. Isn't that nice? I love that. So let me get these on real quick. And if I wanted, I could be real fussy and make different color to go on the back. But, I mean, I like it just the way it is. So, so I hope you'll um, come along with me on this journey. I'm so excited to work on this journal. And you know what? This would be perfect, too, for an October daily. If you want to, if uh, you're someone that makes an October daily, um, I'll show you some options for pages. See how nice it just fits so nice. Looks so professional. I'm so I'm so impressed with these. <laughs> I wish I came up with this idea, but really, I mean, think about different papers that you could use and um punches to make decorative edges, things like that. I love this. I think it looks great. So let me get that on. Isn't that something? Looks so professional, doesn't it? Like real, real, um, wow, look at that. I love it. Perfect. Okay, so the only other thing I can show you, and, and you can, you know, you, I like a little dimension on the cover. So depending on what uh, scene you pick for your cover, the, like I said, the reason I wanted this one, although Frank would have been really, really good on the cover here, I could have done him too in the moon. I don't know. I don't know why, but I picked that one. But I really like this because I like the house bigger on here. So, um, you know, think about what you're doing. So because I, you know, I told you I bought the moon die from Tim Holtz. So I wanted to put the moon on the front. And like I said, that could have went on here just perfectly too. So I did, I used more of my mica sprays and I made the moon. So that moon's going to go up there. And then I cut out some of the bats. So I'm going to uh, pop those bats off here. I'm going to do that. Um, so think about what you want to use for your cover. You want to put a little dimension on there. If I could pick these up, I will. And then... I'll probably do something like that, glue them on, like that. And that's that's going to be the cover, and I'm not sure if I'll put anything else on there, but I'll get back to you on that. But this is the base um, pocket here is what I'm doing, but you can do it anywhere you want. You've got that. Flip it to the back. Here we are here. There's room for five signatures. I mean, what more do you need? So I hope um, I explain this better for you. If you have any questions or you're a little bit confused, you know, leave me a comment. I'll get back to you on that. And like I said, I will link Chasing Paper down below, as well as my friend Amy from Crafty Cat with her beautiful digital. So have a blessed day, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.